Right guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part two of the build of the uh, installing a Shimano um, SLX M7000 um, one by system onto this uh, what was a, uh, a cube hybrid bike when I first purchased it. But we're swapping the um, eight speed, what was on there, eight speed Shimano with a triple on the front for a one by system. So if you missed the first video where I, where I uh, took the components off then go back and watch the one before this just to see all that and fit in the cassette um, and fit in the bottom bracket in and things like that. So if you missed that one go back and have a look. In this video I'm going to be fitting the crank set, the chain, rear, uh, rear derailleur, the shifter, lever. Um, but anyway I'll go ahead and I'll show you the bits what I've got and we'll have a look. Right so here's the uh, front uh, chain set there, crank arms, obviously Shimano like I said, SLX there, this happens to be a 32 tooth on the front on the chain ring there, so you can easily swap it out for a slightly bigger size if needs be, but um, we're starting, that's going to be the starting point. So the opposite crank arm, non-drive sides in there. We've got obviously the one by shifter there. This is just uh, see a clamp on style uh, shifter. And there's the rear uh, derailleur. You see there. It's now a DM7000, it's a GS. One, 11 speed obviously. We've got 11 speed chain there and uh, the missing link to put in it as well, just to join it together. So that's the bits, so we get on and fit them. Right, so the old setup, the 8 speed Shimano, was 2718 grams in total. So I'll stick the SLX on and see what that is. Right, so we start off with the uh, chain set, crank set. So that's 705 grams. So then we go and put the uh, shifter on there. 138 grams. Then we got the bottom bracket, 75. So next we got the uh, rear derailleur, 325. And then we've got the uh, chain, 257. Right, so here we have the uh, XT Shimano um, 1140 cassette there. So I'll just go ahead and pop it on there. 417 grams. Obviously you can knock a bit off, it's still got the spacer in the middle, but that's not the um, the cassette holder bit in the middle there. But that's not going to weigh much. Probably about 5 grams. So you can knock about, say it was a uh, 410 roughly. So the SLX uh, group set came in at 1910 grams in total. So, right, the first thing I'm going to put on is the uh, SLX rear derailleur there. Obviously, this is a clutch uh, style rear derailleur, so um, therefore, you just install it and leave it in the off position on the switch, not, not on, obviously. And the reason being is if you put the switch on you won't be able to move the arm there with the, the, with the jockey wheels on it. It's fixed and obviously if it's off then you can move it as normal. So if you just leave it in the off position and just uh, put it on your derailleur hanger. So we'll get that, obviously put a bit of grease anti-seize on the uh, 
on the bolt there as you're putting it on just to uh, stop it um, getting corroded in there and just make sure that you've got the lug at the back there actually resting against the drader hanger. So just go ahead and nip that up for now. So that's on there, ready for a, a cable when we get to that point. So next I'll go ahead and uh, put in the uh, front cranks. That's right guys, here's the uh, obviously the drive side um, crank car with the chain ring on it. You've got the non-drive side. Now when you go and install this just make sure that the uh, 5 mil hex heads there are undone and the piece of plastic is sticking up so you can see it stuck up in the air otherwise the arm won't slide on if that piece of plastic's not that's the locking piece of plastic that is so if it's up that means you can slide it on if it's down then you won't be able to slide the arm on so I'll go ahead and just put this on make sure you've got some uh, grease on it as well before you go ahead and put it in you should just be able to slide it through like so, just obviously just give it a tap, make sure it's all the way through and then I'll go ahead and do the opposite side so right here we are on the non-drive side obviously you want the arm opposite to the uh, drive side and you can see on there you slide it with the biggest the slot at the top there, the largest bit obviously corresponds with the slot in the uh, inside the um, crank arm itself, the slot in the in there is larger, so you just you can just go ahead and put that on there. So obviously you get that located all the way in, like so, and then you go ahead and put the lock nut in the centre and to put that on you just have to put it in first just start it by hand like so it's only a plastic, they're only plastic so then you go ahead and just nip it up with the tool like so just put that in get the tool in there like so and you just basically you can just nip it up just by hand, you don't need nothing on it, you just do it up by hand. So and all it does is just take just gives just a bit of load on the bearings. Obviously you don't want too much. As long as it spins freely. Like so. Then it's fine. You don't want to overdo it because you're putting excess load on the on the bearings in the uh, the bottom bracket itself. But I say you can just do it by hand like that. Then afterwards you can push your tab down, sticking up, push that down and then you can go ahead and tighten up your uh, 5 mil hex heads. Just do them alternately so the gap in the middle is nice and even. Just do one side until it's nipped up, then the opposite side, then this side, then the opposite side. Just nip them up to manufacture uh, torque spec on those and make sure you do them up evenly. Right so the next step I'll just go ahead and put the uh the shift lever on, on the handlebar. That's right guys, there's the, uh, the shifter mounted on. Obviously, you just put the shifter on first, then your brake lever, and then just put your handlebar grip back on. And that's it mounted on, just nip it up wherever you want it, your personal preference. So then you've got the cable, this one comes fair with the cable as it happens. Um, so we go ahead and just cut some new uh, outers for it. And if you want to know how to put a cable in it, then behind that screw there, just unscrew that. It's just a plastic sort of, um, it's just plastic screw. Just take that out and then shift down to the lowest at the rear, so the 11 tooth or whatever you've got on the back at the, on the rear. Shift right down before you cut any cables or anything. Then take that out and you'll see the end of the cable in there. So you can just snip the cable and push it through and it'll come straight out of that hole. And then all you've got to do is put your new cable through and then uh, put your screw in if it doesn't come with a cable. So here's the old length of cable I had for, for the uh, that goes initially from the shifter. So the uh, new shifter, the SLX one in the box, if you get it brand new in the box, 
it comes with a length of um, outer cable obviously and the inner already in the uh, shift lever so you can go ahead and just mark out where your cable wants to be length voice so just put your finger where it's going to be then you can get rid of the old one just make sure you've got a pair of decent cutters for the cables there's nothing worse than uh, trying to chew through them with a, with a um, pair of pliers or something so you're better off investing in some cable cutters make life easier so once you cut the cable you want something like with a point on it so you can open up in the case, inside the case in there because it always crushes it slightly so if you just go ahead and put that in there and just open it up again and obviously check the other end just because it came from the factory doesn't mean that it's not opened up so just helps him keep the shifting smooth so you just check the ends of those like that and then you can go ahead and put yourself a couple of uh, cable ends on obviously also when you're putting those on just check down inside them because some of them manufacture where they manufacture some of them can have they're not even um, opened up very well inside they can have a piece of plastic stuck in them or something like that and then um, they almost look like they're blocked inside so you can just open them up and then hold them up to daylight quickly and just make sure that you can actually see through them um, properly or enough anyway for a cable to go through before you put them on the end and get it all on the bike so put it on there like that and that's one cable done obviously um, you can get uh, different types as you get further down you can put the case in the different covers on like so they just stop water ingress into the cables or they help anyway lower down where, the, where the, a lot of the dirt's going to be nearer the drailer etc um, so you can use them as well but I say it comes they come with these in the kit anyway and the cable stop and everything comes in there so you've got enough cable you've got a nice length of cable to do the job with so they give you plenty of cable for the hour cable so once you've got your um, outer cables cut to length and the ends put on and everything like I showed then you can go ahead and put your inner cable from the shift lever just thread it through all the way through until you get to the uh, rear derailleur and then I'll go ahead and show you just the steps to set up the rear derailleur so you can see you just leave your um, cable just hanging for now don't don't bother putting it through the pinch bolt at the minute so obviously you've got your adjustment screws which is a low screw and then a high screw up there and the B screw or the body screw as it's called now the B screw if you tilt if you push the derailleur towards in hold it that way and then push it over towards the cassette you want it so it's going to miss the teeth so I'll do it I'll try and do it this way around for you so I'll hold it I'll just push it over like so you can see there when it's touching when it's as far as it's going to go it's not hanging back like that it's just until it hits the stop like that and push it over you can see there that there's not a lot of gap between the top jockey wheel see and the cassette so what you want to do is adjust the B screw so as that gap increases so it's a wider gap because that's no good like that the chain can't fit through there so it just needs to go down like that obviously I'm doing it with a hand but you wouldn't be doing it like that you've got to do it by adjusting the B screw and it opens up the gap so it's like about 6mm all we can do is get about 6mm it's just get an allen key and just hold an allen key in there roughly 6mm allen key so it's roughly 6mm gap so and that's by adjusting like I said these are 2.5mm allen keys to adjust the screws but the B screw you just adjust it and it just opens up the gap just give it a few turns or whatever you've got to do to get yours in the right place it depends what rear cassette you've got on if you've got like a 42 on there or something you might have to adjust it more than obviously the 40 which is on here so you can just adjust it until you get the gap right right so once you've uh, 
adjusted your B screw so you got the roughly the six mil gap like I said then you go ahead and make sure obviously the clutch is um, in the off position then you can go ahead and just check your low and high screws and make sure that they're set roughly right so obviously the high screw adjustment is doing the drylier over towards the smallest at the back, so 11 tooth at the back. So just by looking, obviously you can see, it's hard to show on here, but you see the, like the top jockey wheels over there. So you've got to look straight down it, which I can't really do with this, but make sure it's in line with that. So by adjusting the, the high screw, you're just adjusting, you don't need the cable in there, you're just adjusting that that, that is in line with the 11th tooth at the there. And then the low screw is the opposite, so if you push over on the dry layer like so, at the back, you want to adjust it, so obviously, again, it's a job to show because the camera is not like looking with your eye, but you want to adjust it so you can see that that obviously is in line with the, the largest of the back, like this house just happens to be a 40 at the back, but it could be a 42, whatever you've got on the back. So just adjust it over so it's you want it so it's just past in line as in towards the spokes so you want it a bit more than dead in line you want it just over slightly towards the spokes past the past the um, the largest uh, sprocket that way when you do put the cable on and it'll pull over slightly when you put the cable on and then it won't be in line so you better put it towards the spokes just slightly only talking a few mil more and then you can go ahead and put the cable in once you set up the high and low screws so once you've done your high and low screws and your adjustments all you got to do then is slacken off the four mil hex head put the cable behind the, uh, the pinch bolt there and then just nip your cable up boy and all you got to do is just make sure you're pulling on that slightly give it a bit of tension and then whilst you nip up the allen key then just nip that up and then obviously now that's nipped up, you can just go up to your shift lever and make sure before you do that, make sure your shift lever is actually shifted down to the bottom. If it doesn't come set in the bottom position, make sure it is set down there on your shift end. Otherwise you'll put it on and it won't work properly. So make sure the shifter lever is set down to the 11 at the bottom to drain as far furthest over this way. So once you nip your cable up like so, then if you just go ahead and push on your shift lever so you shift up you can just shift up like so to the end right to the uh, largest at the back and then you can just look like I said earlier you can just look I haven't cut the cable or anything at this stage you can just look at the chain line and you can see looking now if it needs if you adjust it right you should be bang in line like it is there so it's bang in line with that. I don't even need the chain on or anything. You don't have to worry about that. And then obviously you can just shift down. Make sure that it's going to shift down nicely. And it should end up sitting like that. Underneath the 11 at the back. So you know your high and low limits are set. Don't need a chain on or anything to do any of that. So once you're happy with that, you can just leave your cable for time being. Don't bother cutting it off yet or anything. So once you're happy with that, and now you've got that done, you can obviously just recheck that your B screw was about right. So there's a gap between it, so the chain's gonna actually go between like that. Like I said, about six mil gap, roughly. So once you're happy with that, then we can go in and uh, sort the chain out and cut that to length. Right guys, so um, I've got the chain obviously just hanging on the bike there. Now this is just going to be a quick sort of guide on how to size the chain. If you just fit in something, if you've got a new bike or whatever and you just put a group set on it like so behind me and you want to know how to size the chain correctly for the first time, if you haven't got a chain for reference, then I'll just go ahead and show you um, a quick rough guide on how to size the length of the chain. Obviously I'm starting with a brand new chain on here. Um, which is 116 link Shimano chain 
and it'd be 117 with a quick link in it but that'd be the total length new so obviously if you need to cut it down um, I'll go and show you how to size it up and how to uh, just remove it remove one of the pins just to shorten it so I'll go ahead and get into it right so here we have the chain just on there like so obviously being a one by setup it's got sort of wide and narrow teeth on the front so to drop the chain in you just have to make it only drop in a certain place on the front because they're wide and narrow teeth just to stop the chain obviously jumping off because it hasn't got front um, mech on it now the easiest way to start with this is make sure you've got the uh, well, there's various ways of doing it to be fair but if you put the trailer down at the bottom so it's on the 11 at the bottom or whatever you've got um, you can quickly size it up as a rough um, size guide just put your chain on so obviously it's around the front and then just get your chain like so and put in your quick link obviously if you're adding a missing link in there make sure you've just got one half of it ready just set, sitting in there like so and obviously pull on it and what you're looking for is obviously at the moment if it was like that that's too long you can see the chain is hitting the top it's interfering with the chain here on the top jockey wheel so you want it so it's, it misses that top jockey wheel so just pull it and it's got to go to the corresponding obviously male link of the chain so if you pull on it like so then the nearest one's going to be there so obviously you can see the gap underneath where the top jockey wheel is you can see the gap there so obviously as you shift up to get to the biggest at the back wherever you've got this happens to be a 40 then it pulls down it pulls it short like so so if you've got the chain too short if you're starting with it there or something by the time you get up the top it's going to be snapping your rear driver off so you need to, so it just misses the misses the uh, in the 11 at the back and it's just going to miss the um, top jockey wheel there so the chain's not interfering with each other and then go to the nearest male link obviously I've got a quick link so then just mark it get yourself a marker pen and just mark that link and then you go ahead to take the chain off the bike once you know where it is just take the chain remove the chain and then you're ready to get your uh, chain tool like so for extracting the pin out of it or putting a new pin in whatever you're going to do so I'll go ahead and do that right so I marked the appropriate um, link there with a black marker pen on the opposite side obviously just there and that's the one I want to remove so to remove it you get, when you get your chain tool like so this just happens to be a park tool one but there's various ones on the market you go ahead and just and just drop your uh, chain in make sure you got the right make sure you got the right link drop it in like so and do that make sure it's going in straight and square otherwise it could bend the pin on your tool so I'm pushing it through obviously it's going to be tight initially and then once it pops the pin out the other side then it will go take the slack out of it they're always tight until it goes like that and then obviously you can see the you can see the rivet coming out the back like so just keep pushing it through until it comes out once it pops out like that it goes slack then you know you can just back the tool off like so and there it is it's removed the pin will just drop out like so there's a connecting pin there then you're just left with the just left with the chain like that and obviously you wanted it like that because you need that end because obviously if you've got a master if you've got a link like so missing link that's going to go in there and obviously you want the same end left on the other end of your chain 
and obviously if you're not if you're riving it together again then you want the male and the female end so you can put it in and re-rivet it so right once you put the chain back on after you've uh, cut it down remove the uh, rivet and then you join it back together whichever way rivet it or um, put a missing ink in like so then you're ready just to check run through the gears obviously now you've got the chain right you can run through the gears and check that they all work properly I would say all I've done is just wrap the cable up out of the way the, out, the inner cable there I haven't even cut it off yet so ready to just put this on the stand there and uh, we'll see if it works properly right so we start off at the 11 at the back 11 tooth as I say we just cut the chain down so it misses there so there's no contact between the two so we start off there and we just go up through the gears so it's the first time it's been run through the gears. And so as you can see as it goes up in the chain, the trailer moves forward all the time. But say like, if you got it right, then obviously you don't want your trailer right forward here somewhere to the point where it's gonna that it might snap the trailer off. So obviously that's about spot on. So it goes up perfect. So I haven't cut it cut the uh, put a stop on there and cut the cable or anything yet just in case so you've got to check on the way back down and make sure that it doesn't need any fine adjustment obviously that's spot on straight away I say if it needs fine adjustment say if you're shifting like I am now and it's just hung up or it, or it shifts two it might go up two instead of one when you shift one on the lever it goes up two or you shift and it's hung up between one and the other, so it's just slipping as it's going round. Then obviously you just need to order your barrel adjuster. Obviously, being as it's a mountain bike one down here, it doesn't have a barrel adjuster down there. Not like road road derailers. The the barrel adjuster is up on the uh, shifter itself. So just give that a turn or half a turn, or whatever at a time until the one where you need it, where you've got the problem, it's eliminated. So you just might have to give it just a little tweak, half a turn or whatever with a barrel adjuster rather than that that's set up so it's all working properly all I'll do now is um, cut the cable's length and put a stop on it obviously you don't want it too long so it's going to go in your spokes with these the drayers now where they're pointing this way obviously they go near your spokes so just make sure you keep it cut away from the spokes otherwise you're wondering what the ticking noise is and obviously the um, the front shift here you can cut it comes with a, a clear one indicator on the front there but you can swap it it also comes with a, a blank so you can put a blank cover on there if you want to just to eliminate that if you're not if you don't want that on there you can just blank it off by removing that and blanking it with that. So there you go, you just remove that little screw there and you can swap it from being tall one like that just to being flush down there like that which makes it look a bit neater I think. Right guys that's the conversion complete behind me to a one by setup on the old hybrid bike so I'll uh, be hitting some gravel tracks with that no doubt in the near future but if you found the video helpful in any way give it a thumbs up Subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content. Until next video, ride safe and I'll see you then.